name is Alex Gregus, and I want to welcome you to the Finding Lost Civilization series. Today, the population of California is approximately 40 million people. However, in 1769, when Europeans first began to settle into California, the original native population was thought to be from one to 300,000 people. Unfortunately, by the year 1900, this population had been reduced by 90 percent and therefore much of their culture and history has been lost in time. Now today's journey is going to be a fascinating trek. It actually began several years ago with the discovery of a series of circles of stones on top of a hill. Well, it was later determined that these circle of stones identified a native village site. So I invite you to come trek with me on this fascinating journey, Lost in Time. I'm sitting at the entrance of a pit house and you can see the circular stone foundation to this pit house. These stones were laid in this pattern so that they form the backstop to the poles that were laid here to form the framework of the pit house. Walking amongst this ancient village site is very exciting. When I visit these locations, I always ask myself, who were these people? How did they live? What was their life like? And what finally happened to them? Walking in their steps has always been a great pleasure. My goodness, look at this directly to our front. Here is a mortar. This is a place where an ancient once squatted and ground their food. I tell you, these sites are really fantastic. Lost in time, but still here for us 
to share amongst ourselves. Now one of the interesting things about this site is that there are many burrowing animals. And what these animals do is they bring to the surface some of the items and tools that the ancients once used. Let me show you what was found here on the surface. Friends, as an example of what was found laying here on the ground, this red piece over here is known as hematite. This was widely prized by the ancients because this could be ground down and then used as a paint. Look at this over here. Look at this right over here. It's like a chalk. Again, this was highly prized by the ancients and was considered a trade item. Now this over here are shell fragments. Again, we're not near the seashore, and so these items were probably traded. Now this item over here is very smooth. This is a pestle, and it probably was used to grind the hematite here into a powder, which was then eventually made into a paint. Now these stone items are known as scrapers. Look at this. These stones were shaped by ancient man used as a cutting or scraping tool. Look how sharp this is over here. So it was used in this manner to scrape or this way to cut. I'll tell you, this is really fantastic. All these items were found here laying on the ground. Now, as I said, our journeys here to this location is about knowledge. It's not about gathering artifacts. And everything that you see here is left on site. I'll tell you what, this is really going to be a fantastic journey. Walking in the steps of the ancients has always been somewhat of a mystery because much of their history has been lost in time. Look at this directly in front of us. This is a mortar site, an ancient one squatted here and prepared his food. I tell you, not many of these sites exist today. Look at this directly in front of us. There is a fence line that a rancher placed here. This area is now used for grazing. And so when the European settlers arrived to this area, they had no appreciation, they had no knowledge of the people that once lived here. And so the history of these ancient sites was lost in time. And often the architecture, for example, the stones around the pit houses were cleared so that the field could be farmed or used for grazing land. So we are very fortunate to have found that small piece of history that we can share amongst ourselves today. Directly above us is where we saw the pit houses. But below this hill is a stream, and of course water was a source of life. And as I was walking along the stream bed, I found an interesting object. And one of the fun things about these journeys is finding the juxtaposition of the old and the new. Look at this right over here. This item over here is a pestle. It's broken in two, but I tell you what, this is hundreds if not thousands of years old. And as I was looking at this pestle, I looked up at the creek bank and I saw this. Look, my friends, this is a tire that somehow or another got washed down this bank, this stream, which was a source of life to people at one time and still is today. So, a thousand years from now, when man excavates this area and finds this tire, they will say the same thing I did when I found this pestle. My goodness, signs of ancient man. They were once here. I tell you what, these journeys are always so fascinating and fun. Let me show you something interesting here that was found along the banks of the stream bed. This item right here 
is a combination mono and pestle. By pestle I mean it was used in this manner. In other words, in the mortar going this way, pounding. When you turn it over you can actually see the pound marks, so to speak. But it was also used as a stone for grinding in this manner. Here you go, this way. Right over here it's a flat, smooth surface. This is a very interesting stone. As I said, it's a combination of what's called a mano and then a pestle. I'll tell you, this is always such a joy to encounter these type of Stone Age tools. We have another interesting item over here. This was a tool used by the ancients. It's very smooth over here. It was held this way. But right over here, it's pitted. You can see it right over here. This was probably what today we would call a flint napping tool. In other words, it was held this way to hit the softer stone, to flake off the chip, to make projectile points. This is really fascinating. You might ask yourself, well, how do I know that these items are actually tools used by the ancients? Well, the one thing that you have to remember is that we have what's called a contextual association. In other words, these items, these tools, were found at an ancient village site. Now, conversely, if I was walking in a desert or in the mountains out in the middle of nowhere, these would just probably be stones, cobblestones for that area, not having any association with people. But as I said, the thing about these two tools is that they are associated with an ancient village site. And therefore, more than likely, these are tools used by the people during their everyday life during that period. And as I said, these tools could be hundreds, if not thousands, of years old. friends, I hope that you've enjoyed the journey that we've taken to this ancient village site. Now one of the things that I want to mention is that California's native indigenous culture did not vanish. It survives today and continues to flourish. Well anyways, I hope that you continue to trek with me as we visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten.